Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to today's upload. I hope everyone is doing well. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help this channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into today's upload, shall we? So I got to thinking yesterday while I was sitting there um after watching a youtube short about the lovelock cave and the giants that were found in that cave these red-haired huge giants also besides those there was a couple of other very strange large skeletons found there as well but I, I then started to think about <clears throat> the dumbs in America. Uh, one being Dulce. Uh, as many people think, a lot of people think that Area 51 is a cover. That that's where they want us to look. But in reality, there is another uh, secret base somewhere else. I, I believe that. I believe that there are dumbs all over our country and I believe that Dulce is uh, not just the only base that there were a cooperative of human and uh, I use this word roughly alien life form um, and, and creating genetic mutations now I had talked to Laura Eisenhower, who is Ike Eisenhower's great-granddaughter, and she's kind of a whistleblower on things that her granddad knew. And I said, hey, uh, you know, what do you think about these crawlers? Uh, do you think these crawler creatures could have been created in these dumps, like Nightmare Hall, and escaped? And she I hadn't really heard about crawlers because cryptids aren't her thing. But if you really look at a crawler and you think about what these air quotes aliens look like and humans look like and what these creations, I mean, they were just doing, according to a lot of uh, whistleblowers, just horrendous genetic uh, atrocities. Um, so in actuality, it wouldn't be that far fetched. Now, then I started to think about, so I'm thinking about these red haired giants here in America at Lovelock. Then I start to think about the red haired giants over in the Middle East. And I had remembered an upload that I had done. And I'm going to share a couple of these things with you just so you guys can get the feel of it. And then this is just something for you guys to kick around. But I'm going to hit you with a bunch of information and uh, let you know what I feel 
or an idea that I have or a theory that I have and uh, let you guys think about it and come up with your own. So let's get into it. One thing that I do want to emphasize before I share some info with you is what I'm thinking or what I was thinking yesterday while I was just jotting all this information down and theory down is what if the red haired giants were because there is supposed information that uh, the red haired giants in the Middle East were using ancient technologies that were equal to ours. All right. So then I started to think about, well, dogmen are huge, right? But they're not as big as these giants were supposed to be. And, and what do humans have as their best friends, as their protectors? Dogs. What if, what if these giants thousands and thousands of years ago genetically created dogmen to protect them? I don't know. Broad theory, but here's the information. On April 12th, 2017, the United States Air Force dropped the largest conventional bomb in the Pentagon's arsenal to flush out Islamic State terrorists, according to official Pentagon reports. However, insider testimony suggests another reason for the use of the Moab bomb. The undisclosed goal was to flush out, capture, or destroy giants hiding in Afghanistan's ancient cavern system who possess technological secrets going back to the origins of human civilization. The massive ordnance air blast bomb, MOAB, aka Mother of All Bombs, contains 21,600 pounds of explosive and has a mile-long blast radius. The intercepted report that the MOAB was not used by the Bush administration back in 2003 due to fears of collateral damage. President Trump appears to be living up to his pledge to bomb out ISIS. But is he? Are ISIS terrorists the real target, or just a cover for the undisclosed enemy? A threat Trump may not have been briefed about, but one locked in the crosshairs of the deep state that is really behind the Pentagon's attack. A number of whistleblowers have come forward with stories of giants hiding in Afghanistan and other locations, where these giants are currently awakening from stasis chambers. They have been asleep for thousands of years. Secret Space Program whistleblower Corey Goad was among the first to publicly disclose the existence of stasis chambers that have been holding perfectly preserved giants for millennia. In August 4th of 2015 interview, Goad disclosed how he accessed information on smart glass pads during his covert service about these sleeping giants and the technology of the stasis chambers that were preserving them. Goad said, when I was in the program, the secret space program, when I would have time to sit and look at the smart glass pad, there was lots of information that I looked at. And one of them was that there were beings that were found underneath the surface of the earth, usually underneath mountains, burial mountains, Indian burial mounds, that were not dead, but were not quite alive. They were called stasis beings, and it turned out that they had been using technology that had been there long prior from this group they called the Ancient Builder Race. So, it didn't put these beings in stasis that a lot of us would think of as in being frozen, but it just changed the way they experienced time. They would probably go to sleep for maybe 20 minutes and 30,000 years or so would pass by. Goad described the size of these beings found in the stasis chamber, and to look down in, we saw they were very tall or very large giant humans with reddish beards. These tall, red-headed, red-beard groups were in Europe, 
South and North America, and apparently at one time before the Ice Age, apparently. They had a very large area that they ruled. According to Stephen Quayle, who has written several books about giants, elite United States military forces have been stationed around the world, including Afghanistan, to locate the giants. He cites elite military personnel who have spoken to him about battles with these giants. During one of Quayle's interviews, one of his military informants called in and told the audience about an incident in Afghanistan involving a deadly encounter between a 12-foot giant and the United States Special Forces. The informant claimed that the giant had killed nine members of the elite team sent to capture it, and it took a second team to arrive and finally kill that giant. There are similar stories from another Special Force operative stationed at McDill Air Force Base who had served in Afghanistan and is knowledgeable about the secret war to capture and kill giants. Quail uses biblical sources to support his analysis of these giants and what they meant for humanity in the current era. Basically, he views them as the biblical Nephilim, who are offspring of the fallen angels who interbred with humanity, as mentioned in the book of Genesis. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also after, afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of man when they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of the renown. There are multiple biblical passages that refer to the giants or Nephilims and the wars waged against them by the ancient Israelites. So they brought to people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone to spy it out is the land that devours its inhabitants. All the people that we saw in it are of great height, and there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anach, who come from the Nephilim, and we seemed to ourselves like grasshoppers, and so we seemed to them. Numbers 13.31-33 through 33. The Nephilim slash giants, according to Quail, were predicted to reemerge during the end of times, and to be restored to power by the corrupt global elite who maintain bloodline connections to the fallen angels. Some say the fallen angels described in the Bible were actually extraterrestrial refugees who established a colony in Antarctica approximately 60,000 years ago. The extraterrestrials, originally from Mars, established their Antarctic colony right over the ancient builder race technology that was millions of years old, according to Cory Goad. The fallen angels slash extraterrestrial refugees, pre-Adamites, according to Goad, established colonies all over the world, including the Middle East. They used genetic engineering to create hybrid offspring. The Nephilim slash giants, who were placed in positions of authority to rule as proxies for the alien refugees in Antarctica. The ultimate source of power of the Nephilim slash giants was the advanced extraterrestrial technologies possessed by their progenitors, the fallen angels slash Martians slash pre -Adamites. In a strange irony, perhaps intentional, the Bible refers to a tribe descended from Moab, son of Lot, who battled giants, called the Amin. The book of Deuteronomy says the Amin lived there formerly, a people of great numerous and tall as the Anakim, like the Anakim, they are also regarded as Rephim, but the Moabites called them Amim. The Horites formerly lived there in Seir, but the sons of the Moabites dispossessed them and destroyed them from before them and settled in their place just as Israel did to the land of their possession, which the Lord gave to them. In this passage, the descendants of Moab destroyed the giants in the land of the Moabites, wanted to settle. Now, the Pentagon just used a bomb called the Moab 
according we to destroy the giants hiding in Afghanistan's cavern systems. If Quail and other sources are correct, this does not appear to be a mere coincidence. In addition, the name Isis refers to the ancient Egyptian goddess widely worshipped throughout the ancient Middle East as a benevolent entity. It would not be a stretch to view her as among the fallen angels slash extraterrestrial refugees or Nephilim slash giants that influenced human affairs through advanced technologies that made them appear godlike to humanity at the time. The motivations of the giants are far more complex than what the biblical accounts suggest. Some of the giants, according to multiple sources, were benevolent and not all bloodthirsty tyrants with the intent on destroying humanity. Isis may have been a benevolent giant or extraterrestrial refugee who had access to advanced technologies and wished to help humanity evolve in a positive direction. This suggests a hidden agenda behind the use of the acronym Isis to describe Islamic fundalist groups behind global terrorists. Are we currently repeating history where humans are attacking giants to gain control over territory and ancient knowledge? This appears to be the case in Afghanistan with the use of Moab against alleged ISIS terrorists. Some believe that we are witnessing in the Middle East in terms of war against ISIS terrorists is a cover for a covert war against these giants, some of whom are fowlers of the ancient goddess ISIS. In April 6, 2017, Pentagon strikes again. Syria might also be a part of this covert war being waged against the giants. On the border between Syria and Lebanon lies Mount Hermon, which is described as the main base of operations of the fallen angels, extraterrestrial refugees. And it comes to pass, when the sons of man had increased that in those days there were born fair and beautiful daughters, and the angels, the sons of heaven, saw them and desired them. And they said to one another, according to the Bible, Come let us choose for ourselves wives from the children of men, and let us begot ourselves children. And they were, in all, two hundred, and they came down on Artis which is the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called that mountain Hermon because on it they swore and bound one another with curses. Mount Hermon is where the Nephilim had their center of power in the Middle East and where, presumably, much of their advanced technologies were hidden. Consequently, the renewed push for the United States to enter the Syrian civil war is not driven by humanitarian concerns at all, as claimed President Trump. Instead, the real goal is for United States military forces to enter Syria and locate ancient bases used by the fallen angels slash giants and gain control over the extraterrestrial technologies that are hidden there. Clearly, the surge of the United States military activities in Afghanistan and Syria is a matter of great global concern due to the loss of innocent life. What adds to such concern is evidence that giants, some of whom may be benevolent, are being secretly targeted for capture or destruction. The information that giants have about ancient human civilizations, advanced technologies, and extraterrestrial life deserves to be public publicly released as soon as possible and not withheld to further the interest of the United States military, the global elites who seek to monopolize information possessed by the giants for their own hidden agendas. I just want to touch on a couple of little things that um, we have already heard, but just to kind of share them again, because I think it's important to hear them. Um, we all know, of course, the uh, one of the battles, the, the Giant of Kandahar in 2002. According to accounts, the Giant of Kandahar, who is said to be responsible for an entire patrol going missing, stood a towering 13 feet tall and sported a shock of flaming red hair, six fingers on each hand, 
and two rows of teeth for gnashing, thrashing, and showcasing a smile. That was undeniably dashing. (laughs) Upon contact, the giant reportedly killed one of the U.S. service members with a spear, only to be vanquished by the rest of the unit, courtesy of a 30-second barrage of gunfire, according to an account on allthatsinteresting.com. As the story goes, the soldiers loaded the giant's corpse onto a helicopter to never be seen again. Now, could this huge giant's body be housed under the Pentagon or in secret underground bases that we control? Uh, I mean, come on. Think about this. The Smithsonian was buying giant skeletons from out west, which we'll cover shortly. Uh, And supposedly their bones just disappeared. I mean... (laughs) It's just, it's nuts. Story in the Middle East. While overlooking a village one fateful night, a sword appeared through his newly mounted thermal scope. As he spanned the valley, he came across a large heat signature. He assumed it was a group of Taladon fighters huddling together around a light high up in the mountains. All of a sudden, the heat signature stood up as one being, the soldier recalled, The trees in that area grew to about 10 to 12 feet, and this thing was at least as tall, if not taller, than the trees it surrounded. The giant's stride was slow and relaxed, yet it moved with incredible speed, the soldier adds, noting that the giant's chill yet purposely vibe. It walked parallel to the soldier's position for a time before disappearing along a nearby spur. Stories of the encounter were not shared with many, the soldier reportedly said, but memories of what he had seen came flooding back after listening to a podcast. I think that's what I saw, a member of an ancient race of giants that descended from fallen angels, he wrote. Or it could be something like a Sasquatch, I'm not sure. Experience of an anonymous Air Force drone operator who was working in the northern part of Afghanistan during the war. Scanning around, doing my thing, and looking for stuff, he recalls, one day the drone operator spotted three giants, each standing roughly 12 feet tall. There's a ruler tool that tells you how wide your crosshair is, and the people were as tall as the crosshair as wide, the operator said. This was all in mid-wave infrared at night, so they showed up as black humanoid heat signatures. For ten minutes, the operator observed them, during which time he reported the giants tended their fire and performed other chores. You know, giant stuff. The only interesting thing was the size, the operator writes. The goats look like cats next to them. An Australian army officer who was on sentry duty in the country's province of Urizagan recalls spotting a giant going for a leisurely stroll around a compound nearby. It was lanky and wore unusual clothing, he states. By lazing the compound, the officer estimated the giant to be about 1,800 meters away. It was not in a hurry, and I followed it for five minutes before it went out of my field of vision. The officer recalled, adding that he suspected the giant to be about 12 feet tall. Just looking like it was walking, he states, it was not in a hurry at all, but was aware of what was happening around it. Kept looking around, especially near the compounds. I don't know if anyone else who saw anything like it Never told anyone about it before, but it has stayed with me over the years. All right, so not looking at it in a biblical stance. All right, I really, I really don't like when people want to look at cryptids as biblical. Because do we look at animals as biblical? No. I mean, we don't know if these are flesh and blood yet. It's just theories. Um, but let's just take the giants, 
for instance, all right? Are they hybrid creatures? Like what happened in Dulce. There was creations of these creatures, monsters, cryptids, whatever you want to call, in Nightmare Hall. Is this what happened in Afghanistan and in the Middle East? We don't know, of course, because there has not been whistleblowers like the ones in Dulce or Area 51, Lake Mead, whatever you want to say. All right, well, here. Here's some more hybrid creatures like Dogman. In 2008, I deployed to Iraq near the Iranian border in Maison province. On more than one occasion, we would catch local nationals at TCPs with handguns. They were allowed to have rifles, but not handguns. It's worth noting these dudes were usually on motorcycles, felt more exposed, I'm assuming. And they would reply, there are animals here that eat people at night. Our interpreter said that the closest translation for what a couple of these guys said was something like a hyena or a werewolf, some kind of local slang for said monster. I don't know. Mid-deployment, I was on a mission right smack on the border, standing guard in the gunner's hatch of my Humvee while the rest of the guys were racked TF out. My platoon was in a big circle around the commander's MRAP with all of the gunners pulling watch in shifts overnight. I hear this god-awful noise like I've never heard before, like big dogs growling would sound if you were to use software to slow it down, very guttural. I look, and about 30 yards or so directly in front of me is some crazy-looking dog thing. It took a second to make out its figure, but it was oddly proportioned. Almost hyena-like, with a bulky chest, it seemed. It had freakishly long ears. I could feel the thing staring at me. After about five minutes or so, it made its terrifying demon dog noise again and just turned and walked away towards the area where the closest Iranian border fort or tower was. During this whole ordeal, I was quietly stomping my foot going, guys, guys, trying to wake up my buddies, so I'd know I wasn't going crazy, and nobody woke up. I asked the other guys in the platoon if they saw anything that night. The following morning, they looked at me like I was retarded. This was in the middle of nowhere in the desert near the border. So, I just brushed it off and never mentioned it again. Whatever this thing was, walked on all four legs and looked comfortable doing so. As I said, it turned and walked away slowly at that, almost as to reassert its dominance as if it hadn't already. I'm skeptical about anything supernatural, but I do believe there are things out there that we don't know exist yet. The type of animals who are reclusive, to the extent that the only people who encounter them don't live to tell about them. Just my opinion. No idea what it was that day. It still gives me chills thinking about it. I've searched and searched, and can find no type of wildlife native to the area that accurately fits the description. Whatever it was, it scared me very badly, and I was standing behind an M2 Browning. 2017, in Syria, me and a buddy were sentries on night shift. We were out a ways from the fob, assuring we didn't get ambushed in the night. I had thermals, and my buddy had nods. Later in our shift, I see a weird signature on the thermal over where we knew there was a flock of sheep. I didn't quite remember the details, but I just remember one minute there was a whole flock of sheep, and the next I'm scoping it all out, and the signatures from the sheep are gone, but there was one that was unlike a sheep. I could barely see it in the thermals, but it was definitely moving a little next to a faint heat signature. It took a bit to describe exactly where I was looking, but 
He figured it out. He definitely saw something in his NV. Also, but he didn't have an explanation either, saying it was tall, lanky, dark, and seemed like it was just fidgeting. Eventually, the heat signature it was next to slowly faded away. Also, whatever we were looking at started slowly showing up as slightly colder than ambient temperatures. I let my buddy look through my thermals, and he had no explanation either. The sheep disappeared was weird because there was no obvious place they could have gone based on our line of sight and no obvious concealment for them to hide behind. Eventually we lost visual of what we were looking at. Same story as the sheep. Seemed like we were quit looking at it for a minute and the next it was gone and the sheep were back but in a bit further away. Next morning we glassed the spot we first spotted it and saw a lot of blood, which we figured must have masted on the thermal for a while since it gave off a cold signature and there was covered in presumably sheep's blood. We didn't tell anyone about it, but a week later we brought it up to the local and he got pretty spooked and didn't want to talk about it. And this is the last little bit of info I have on the Middle East and these giants and kind of hybrid. My cousin was in the Marines and served with the 3-3 Marines or 3-6. I can't quite remember, but he would tell me about things he saw in Afghanistan. Things like seven foot tall red-eyed creatures that would stalk his platoon in old villages. He'd say things like the areas he was in we're like going back 2,000 years and past, but his description and story he told me was he and his unit was out on patrol near a little village. About two hours, and his sergeant asked, do you see that thing at 7 o'clock? Everyone looks, and sure enough, there's this 7 to 10 foot tall human looking thing, but the only thing he could see was the outline and these blood red piercing eyes. He said that it was pure black, slender frame, long arms, long legs, and just those eyes staring back at his unit. They froze, call it in on comms, and headquarters gives the order to shoot, warning shots. They fire a three-round burst at this thing, and it just stays in place. So next they open up on this thing, and they see it drop. They go to check what it was, and nothing. Like it was a ghost. Another time, they were in a clearing abandoned mud huts in a village, and they said as soon as they came up to it, they saw these long claw-like marks on the side of this hut and instantly got a bad feeling. He said he saw the same type of creatures. He had counted eight in all, same height, and build on top of the ridge above the village, same red eyes, those were the only two I know of, but he said they never attacked or anything. He just watched, and he felt watched every time they were in. They were not in a populated area while in country. He also said that a story about an interpreter talking about a jinn. These things are as old as Afghanistan itself, and if you are unfortunate enough to be outside at night, never look behind. That's about all he said on that. So, they really couldn't see what these things were. They got the outline, red eyes, and then they see these claws, claw marks, on the mud huts. It sounds a lot like what we have going on here. That's just my own personal belief and theory, is there's a connection. On to why I have the, the theory that I do. And it's just a theory. It might be wrong. It's just something I thought about and I wanted to share it with you guys. And that's the great thing about theory, right? Jumping back to America. The Saitika, red-headed cannibals. Saitika means tool eaters. In the Paiute language, the persecution of the Paiute of the Saitika drove the giants to live on rafts made of tool, a fibrous water plant. Tool naturally became part of their diet. According to the Paiute oral history, tool was not a preferred lunch of the Saitika. 
They were said to be cannibals, eating the flesh of the Paiute they conquered in their enduring war. Neighboring tribes joined with the Paiute to finally annihilate the Saitika, driving them into what is now known as Lovelock Cave in western Nevada. Tribes piled brush at the cave's mouth and set it afire, killing the last of the Saitika. The giants were forgotten, continuing only in Paiute myth. Until 1911, miners extracting bat guano at Lovelock Cave unearthed giant jawbones and thousands of other Paiute artifacts. The miners were not trained in anatomy and could have mistaken the bones of large cave bears for humans. The lack of proper documentation calls the tourist displays of the bones into question. Giants sell knickknacks and otherwise forgettable region. Even the red hair may have been due to a chemical reaction over the centuries reducing the pigment to red. Basically, it all might be wrong except for the shoes. Sandals measuring up to 15 inches were found in the cave, indicating owners above 7 feet tall. Most of the well-preserved skeletons and mummies were destroyed through the mining or through human ridiculousness. The best specimen of the adult mummies was boiled and destroyed by a local fraternal lodge, which wanted the skeleton for initiation purposes. The Paiute tribe conquered the Saitika, claiming ongoing war with the giants until their eventual defeat. They claimed the giants ate their people, a practice of eating others, especially conquering enemies, in order to gain their strength or other magical powers has been around a long time. Cannibalism is still practiced today in similar reasons. It is not far-fetched to believe that the Saitika would eat those they conquered or even capture Peut to eat, both as a scare tactic and a method of gaining power. History is recorded by victors. The Peut tradition could have taken the legend of some slightly taller neighbors that had become extinct and made them out to be terrifying cannibals with crazy red hair coming at you with a dinner knife in order to give you a reason to the unity of Peut and other tribes. Remember, tribes together, regular-sized Native Americans, were able to defeat the giants because they worked together. Sounds like a lovely moral to me, just a con conjecture. The evidence of cannibalism, cannibalized humans at Lovelock Cave, where the Saitika were found, indicates that someone was eating other humans, whether it was giants or not, and whether it was uh, complying them to eat humans or whether they just had acquired the taste is unknown. If you walked west from Lovelock Cave for a day and a half, you would find yourself at Donner Pass. Don't go during the winter. Driven to extreme survival measures during the winter, it is an unreasonable to believe these conditions drove the Donner Party to eat their dead. Could also have happened to the cannibals at Lovelock Cave. We'll never know who the Saitika really were, how many existed, and what their lives were like, but their war with the Paiute sounds very terrible. So, there's an actual saying that Abe Lincoln was standing looking at Niagara Falls, and he said, I am staring at these great falls with the same, or I am staring at these great falls with my eyes. The same falls that giants of earthly mounds had once stared at. Pretty crazy, right? And if you think about what is said in the Middle East about these mounds, these underground caverns, and we have a ton of mounds, there's giants found in Ohio by these Native American burial mounds. Uh, it's not far-fetched. It really isn't. And if you think about the what was said by Goad, Corey Goad, about the um, ancient builder race and technologies, and you compare it to Dulce and what happened there, they're all almost on the same page, right? Right, creating creating hybrid creatures, this, this, and that. So who's to just say? I mean, really. It may be far-fetched, but who's to say that these ancient builder races didn't create the dogman? 
I mean, if you really think, just think, think, please, about this. A bipedal creature with arms and the head of a dog. Dogs are vicious. You know, wild dogs. They didn't have pet puppy, you know, look at my little puppy. Oh, isn't he so cute? Oh, love him, love him. No, what they had back then were just freaking, they had North American hyenas. They had just the dire wolves. They had monsters back then. You know, monsters roamed these earth, this earth years and years and years ago. So what if they, what if these ancient builder races created these creatures to protect these Nephilim, these giants, these whatever, that would explain how we have bipedal creatures walking that look like dogmen today. More so than evolution or whatever, wherever they came from, we don't know. You know, I, I mean, it, it, just think about it. Really think about it. And it doesn't seem that far-fetched, does it? It really doesn't. Giants, 10 to 12 to 14 feet tall. Dogmen, 7 to 9 feet. The giants still could pummel the dogmen down, but the dogmen could still protect the giants from other giants. You know what I mean? Just, uh, and, and as I was sitting there yesterday, just bored out of my mind, I had nothing else to do, and I just started thinking, and I started looking and researching and going, whoa, wait, what? And then all of a sudden, bam, it came to me. And I was like, this could possibly be the thing that we're looking for. The, the, the cause and effect of why we have bipedal dog-like creatures roaming the earth. We can, our, we can take care of Sasquatch. I mean, really logically thinking, you can sit and you can really put it into a kind of subspecies of human. But a dog, a bipedal dog, you cannot. Unless, unless they were created by these ancient builder races. Who knows? I don't know. Just a theory. I'm leaving it up to you guys to, to think of what you, you know. I just want to share this theory with you. It took a lot of, <laughs> it really did. I had so much time yesterday to just think about it. And I was like, man, this is actually pretty crazy. And I got to share it with these guys. And um, I did. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's upload as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. And, uh, you know, once again, it's just theory, guys. And, and. There's no harm in sharing theory. There's no harm in, you know, uh, if you don't like the theory, you know, but you don't have to knock it. You can be respectful in the comment section. Um, because I was trying to be respectful of everything, you know, with the biblical thing and this and that. And, you know, it to me, it's all just theory until it can be, you know, proven to me 100% in my face. Because that's the only way I really can say something is real you know i know dogmen exist because i saw one um i've had paranormal experiences so i know that the paranormal exists for a hundred percent do i 100 percent believe that bigfoot exists possibly but i haven't seen one yet do I doubt they exist? Absolutely not. But when I see one, then I'll know for 100%. All right, folks, I hope you all enjoyed today's upload as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting this channel. It is your support, after all, that helps this channel to continue to grow and go. And also what gives people a platform to share their ideas, theories, and experiences, ridicule and judgment free, just treated with the respect that we all deserve. Everyone stay safe. Happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, the most precious gift we could be given. Our pets, the greatest alarm system we could have. Family and friends, the people we love and care about. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. 
Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.